Well, hello. Today we have a review from a company called Toolkit RC, which is sort of a multiple charger and thingy. But before we get into it, a quick reminder, please like or dislike this video if you didn't like it. Comment down below, please subscribe if you haven't. Click on the little bell to find out when I'm uploading stuff because all those things really help the channel out. But anyway, what have we got here? Well, I was shown this and I thought, oh, it's just another charger. Do I really want to look at that? But it's so much more. But let's get out of the box. I'll show you what's there and it's, it's not an awful lot. It is this device. This is the main thing. It's got a, a simple jog wheel here and an exit button. Um, round the back, two fans, uh, an input, an XT60, an output, which is an XT60, a big old balance connector, which can take two to eight S, uh, a servo connector here and a USB. I'll, I'll get to what those are used for in a second. Uh, and then the remnants of the box, we get some brief instructions, although there are more in-depth instructions online. And this little USB cable, this is for updating the firmware on the device, which is something we're going to do first. If we plug this in, and if you're quick, it tells me it's on version 1.15. And there is a more up-to-date version. And to update it, all we should have to do is plug this in the computer via USB and drag the firmware onto the, the the drive it appears as, which sounds pretty easy. So let's do that first. All right, so here we are. And so we can talk about exactly how this thing operates and not off to a particularly good start. Basically, I connected this supply USB cable in, plugged it in my computer uh, and nothing. It powered on here, but I didn't get it as a device, so I couldn't update the firmware. So I don't know if I've done something wrong or they've not given a data cable or something, but couldn't update the firmware. So I'll try and find out what's up with that. Meantime though, obviously we could power this with a LiPo battery. But as far as uh, going today, I'm going to power it with um, this 300 watt supply, which can be plenty of power for doing other things. So it would be quite nice to have a barrel connector, but you can make up, you know, adapters for other things to go on XT60s. I'll try and zoom in here, we'll go through the normal settings. Um, First thing I'll do, I'll just turn off this beep because it's kind of annoying. So you've got a settings mode and you've got actually all manner of different beep tones, but fortunately you can turn it off, which is nice. So if we come out of that, you've got the jog wheel and then you press the jog wheel down to go to certain things. So this is the charging part and what you can actually do is, is make your own settings. So if I go uh, there and I can say I would like to charge you can basically set it to auto or the number of cells you want to do so let's say uh, one of my common ones I'd have a four cell which I would charge at 1.3 amps one of my regular quad batteries and I'd set discharge also at 1.3 amps even like that and then I could save that as a, as a thing so uh, I, I kind of like that so you've got five slots there to save like common batteries you may charge so the one I already had set up here is for a is charging at five amps for its so it's it's this uh, 3s 5000 milliamp hour so plugging in wise you've got the XT60 port there and the balance port there and it's really just a case of plugging it in like so um, and then you can just say charge and say do you want to charge 12.6 yes and you can see it starts upping the amps as it goes uh, it's giving you how many milliamps it's putting in how long it's run for the amount of watts the temperature amps the overall battery voltage and of course each of the cell voltages so this was at a uh, storage voltage as you might be able to tell and we're just putting a little bit in there uh, but let's stop that for now uh, so obviously Within the charge settings, you can also say discharge or storage charge. Uh, it's, this one, it sets to 3.85. Most of the other charges I've used set to 3.8. Uh, but, you know, that's different. Discharge-wise, 
When you're using the charger internally, you can discharge at up to three amps. I, I generally charge at discharge at 1C for some particular reason, I think it's nice and kind. But if you attach an external battery here, you can discharge it up to 30 amps into that battery, which uh, is pretty handy if you've got a whole bunch of batteries to do quickly. So then we get on to the measuring part and we've got a battery in there so what we can do is we can it's obviously it's we can measure the voltage it does that anyway and we can even ask it to balance the voltage so all the cells will come to a similar uh, range it's, it's, its range is 379 to 381 so it was kind of already there but we've also got the ability to do an internal resistance test which we can do like this and ooh, not not particularly good results for this battery but it's not a particularly good battery as already new um, but we've got a bunch of other things on this uh, measuring which is kind of interesting so let me unplug this a second because we don't need that battery for this one so one of the things it can do is measure S bus so I've got on this quad uh, an old X4R which I'm going to plug in the little servo port here and this will supply 5 volts so what happens is that is powered up. This, this isn't connected to the actual quad so don't panic about that suddenly flying off anywhere. So that should be talking S bus so I could say measure the S bus which is not particularly exciting because well nothing's happening but if I go ahead and turn on my transmitter there you can see we've now got let's zoom out a touch we can now see the effects of what that's doing which is pretty handy if you're just hooking up controls there and one of the ones it's really handy to see I think is I mean, it's it's different on this one because it's an X4R. But if you're on XM Pluses and you're thinking, "Wow, did I did I write the uh, RSSI firmware there?" You can see on channel eight here, as I move the transmitter away and move it around, it's it's varying, and that's where the the RSSI channel is being pushed back. If I turn that off, it obviously all goes off anyway. But um, yeah, that's pretty handy if you want to just check out a receiver, see if it's working. And aside from SBUS, you can use PPM or PWM just to make sure, I guess, that your channels are working okay. Now, there's one here for the ESC, and this was a little bit of a mystery to me. As I consulted with the instructions, and I couldn't quite figure out how you were supposed to connect things to, to make this work. But what I am doing is I have connected this via battery because I needed this sort of gender converter. Uh, I'm hooking that up to there and this is connected to an ESC and the ESC is connected to a motor and then I connect the servo adapter for the ESC there and then I say measure and I want to do ESC and if I go to start if I now turn this so the output starts going up, the motor starts spinning. So yeah, it's the motor's going, but there's no wattage or amps going through. So I tend to think that's probably not the way of doing it, but unintentionally a, a, a motor tester, maybe. I don't know if that is the idea. We've then also got, if we plug this servo in, we can output PWM. So at the moment we've got a, a manual cycle. In our manual cycle we can go to the width and we can roll that jog wheel and you can see the servo moving very slowly. Or we can just say go to auto auto 2 or auto 3 to make it go even faster uh, and it's pretty good as a servo tester uh, but obviously you can make it transmit 
a signal anywhere along there if you've got a specific function and you're thinking should work on a certain um, USEC width then you can check that and you can do a similar thing you can output PPM or SBUS it's just a case of going to one of the channels and saying I would like to do this much and then going to another channel and setting exactly what you want to do and from that you can actually output a whole set of PPM and there's a similar one for SBUS. The, the power one is about using this as kind of a bench power supply so using the XT60 as your output you can say I would like a power supply please and so it's actually got settings here you notice for Mavic and Phantoms and Inspire it, it's suggesting it can charge their batteries through this um, which is kind of quite interesting as I didn't know there were adapters to go onto the proprietary stuff or alternatively uh, what I thought it might be quite useful for is is if I want to say I have got a 5 volt device and I've got nothing to hook things up then I could simply set this to 5 volts at you know probably no more than like 2 amps maximum Five, and start that and then I could hook some 5 volt device like a camera or a VTX up to here just to check it works okay instead of having to mess around and trying to hook up a different supply to it so I thought that was quite a little handy thing there and then as you saw before we have all the particular settings that you had to do with charging and stuff and then as per almost all devices you've got a USB which will obviously play out 5 volts up to 2.1 amps which is mainly it seems to be for recharging your phone when you need to well I quite like this it's got some pretty nifty features and once again it's not one of these things where you'd be saying hey throw away your existing chargers because now there's this and it does other stuff it's kind of one of these things that's cool um, if you're needing a new simple charger um, and you want some extra functions as well I particularly like the, the servo testing and if you've ever flown planes and that and you just need to center a servo you'll, you'll know what I'm talking about um, but I also like the fact you can check what's happening for a receiver look at the channels there and it also works quite nicely as a signal generator if you're ever wanting to connect on to a flight controller or some sort of autopilot and you want to generate a certain uh, RC input without having to hook up everything into it that's, that's quite nice I mean I don't know if that's mass consumption it's just me messing around but that's that's quite nice I like all the test things couldn't get the ESC thing to, to work out how that that measures the amp draw I, I don't know what I'm doing wrong there perhaps someone to tell me and I couldn't get the firmware updated I, I mean I have a feeling if it was anything it's probably likely to be this cable not carrying the the data through but I'm still trying to get to the bottom of that if, if I fix that I'll put a message down below in the description or some sort of pointy thing up here in the corner that to tell you what happened one thing to note though is that you will need a power supply of some sort you can obviously run it through um, a, a great big battery and I often see guys doing this at races having a massive uh, 6s pack to charge all their, their smaller 4s's but if you want to run this at home then you'll need an extra power supply for it something that you know multiple amps at a reasonable voltage level I'll, I'll put a link down below again uh, for some recommendations but aside from those little niggles pretty good and it's only like about 30 pounds so charger plus the ability to do those extra things I think is quite nifty but uh, let's see what you think this came from a Banggood for review so thanks for them for supplying it and of course there'll be links down below um, but in the meantime I hope that's been helpful for you and I will catch you in the next one bye for now well you've made it to the end of the video so thanks once again for watching if you like what you saw then please consider subscribing and if you really like what you saw then be sure to check out the link to my blog for a variety of ways in which you can help support this channel.